Hello, hello again. It's Cat from the Fire Tuna Club. It's time for another pattern. Pattern? Editing! Ah, uh, there we go. There's the pattern we're going to be making today. This video is being made with beginners in mind, so if you need the help, it's right here. If you don't, the pattern does come with instructions. But you don't have the pattern. That's okay, I'm providing it for free. You'll want to check out the Fire Tuna Club blog. URL is listed right there, or you can check out the description box. Either way, go ahead and print out that pattern and let's get started. You'll need a couple other things to get started. Fabric of your choice, eighth of an inch elastic. Yes, I know COVID is making it hard to find elastic, but you really need eighth of an inch. You'll need both fabric and paper cutting scissors as well as a marking pencil, pen, or chalk, whatever is your preference, keep in mind what fabric you're working with. You'll also need a transparent ruler, a regular ruler or seam gauges will work to mark your materials, your sewing machine or needle and thread, whichever is your preference, pins, an iron, mini safety pins if you have them, or a blunt or tapestry needle and thread. Really, any blunt needle will work. You don't want a sharp pointy one for part of this. You'll also need to have your doll handy for fitting, but go ahead and get your paper cutting scissors and let's get started by cutting out the pattern. Just for reference, the Modesty Bloomers and the Regular Bloomers both make the same way. We'll be working with the Regular Bloomer pattern though. If you're not sure this pattern will fit your 1 6 scale doll, you'll want to cut out the test piece, tape it together, and try to fit it on your doll like I've done here. As you can see with my sample bloomers, it has no problems fitting Monster High doll, which is what I initially made it for. It will also fit Disney Descendant dolls, as well as standard Barbies. As you can see here, a thicker body like Cory Cruz from the Wild Hearts crew needs modification. The advanced section for pattern modification will be at the end of the video if you want to go ahead and make these bloomers work for one of your other dolls. Once you have the pattern cut out, get your fabric, Fold it right sides together and pin your pattern piece in place. If you're not comfortable with pinning, you can trace your pattern piece onto the fabric and cut from there. To prevent your fabric from fraying on you as you handle it, you'll want to fray check your pieces. If you're working with a well-woven material, you may not even need to do this step. You'll want to pick a side, it doesn't matter which, and sew along the curve on that side. Don't forget to clip your curves once you're done sewing, pressing your seams, and cutting off any thread tails. The easiest way I've found for you to be able to make your casing for your elastic is to take your ruler, measure half an inch in from the edge of your material, mark it with the pencil of your choice, bring the edge of your material to your line, and fold down. Then you'll want to fold on the line again and make sure to press your folds with your iron. It is worth it. Make sure you've done that treatment to both the waist and legs. At this point, carefully sew along the edge of the casing to close it. Just for reference, this is what your work should look like at this point in the project. Also, keep in mind that this is a step where you will want to add embellishments like lace and trim before you put the elastic in. So you have an idea of where to measure, you'll want to put your unfinished bloomers against your doll. Then you'll want to grab your elastic and measure where the waist fell and where the ends of the pant legs fell to get the sizing of your elastic. This should ultimately leave you with one long waist piece and two shorter leg pieces of elastic. Grab your tapestry needle and thread. If you have mini safety pins, they're a great substitution. You'll want to thread your elastic on one side and then work your tapestry needle through one of the casings. When the elastic is fixing to disappear, you'll want to slow down and be very careful to pin the elastic in place on that side and continue weaving your tapestry needle through, pulling your casing onto the elastic and bunching it up. When the elastic comes out the other side, you will want to pin again to keep it in place. Repeat this step for the waist casing and the leg casings. Don't worry, we're almost done. Your project should look a little something like this. You'll want to get your needle and thread at this point to save yourself some trouble. Baste the curved edge as well as the elastic in place so that you can more easily sew it shut. If you're new to sewing or your sewing machine, don't forget to go as fast or as slow as you're comfortable with. You're the one setting your own pace. 
and removing the basting stitch is as easy as cutting out the knot and pulling the string loose. Don't forget to clip your corners and press your seams. If you think your seams are too bulky, you can easily turn a quarter of an inch seam allowance into eighth of an inch seam allowance by cutting off the extra. Last seam, let's do this! What you need to do is separate the legs and fold the bloomers together so that the inseam is where you will be sewing. You'll want to do the same thing you just did. You'll want to baste it in place, make sure you get the elastic so it doesn't pop into the casing on you. Sew it down. Remove the basting stitch if you used one. Clip the corners. Trim the seam if you so desire. Flip it inside out and you're done. It's pattern modding time. Small disclaimer guys. This isn't actually all that advanced. However, I know beginners to sewing may find this challenging. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Modifying this pattern for a 1-6 doll is actually pretty easy. Some dolls are too leggy and sometimes the pattern is too long for what you want. The simplest way to remember on how to mod this pattern for shortening is that the white area between the gray casing areas is the actual length of your garment. If you put your pattern next to your doll and mark the exact length you want, mark a line evenly across that pattern and fold that line to the very tip top of the bottom gray casing area, you'll get bloomers that are exactly the length you want. And just an extra tip, don't forget to label your line so you know what size doll that is for. I've done my best to simplify lengthening a pattern as well. As before, the white area does show you the complete length of the pants. This pattern comes up short on Barbies. I made this pattern for Monster High dolls. In order to make it long enough for a full length bloomer set for Barbie, you'll want to measure from the very bottom of the white space. Figure out the difference. In this case, it was three centimeters. In general, you'll want to add or remove length in the marked area on the pattern to prevent any sort of tampering with the seams where it matters. Mark a line straight across your pattern in that area and cut. On another piece of paper, you'll want to mark a straight line. Add the measured difference from that line to make your second mark line. If you need a little extra help to be able to line up your pattern, draw a third line. You want to tape your pattern down to that piece of paper and now you have a pattern long enough to use. Leave yourself some notes so you don't forget what was going on with your pattern. And don't forget to trim off the extra paper. Repeat these steps vertically if you want to add or remove fullness from the bloomers. Thanks for sticking it out until the end. I hope this video helps you with your sewing adventures. Leave any questions or comments you have about the pattern in the comment section below. If this video helped you out or you just liked it, hit that thumbs up icon. Consider subscribing to my channels to get the latest on the next patterns, doll repaints, or anything else I might get up to. And I'll catch you next time when I finish another project.